Hi, I'm Parasidine, the CTO of ProAct, and I want to share a model with you that I use to quickly find the biggest areas of improvement in a storage infrastructure. Some years ago, I started preaching the ILM message for SNIA. You probably remember the basic idea. All information has a different value when it's created. The value changes over time. Some of the information needs to be kept for long time periods, while a big chunk of this information can be deleted. If you then align the storage infrastructure with the value of the information, you see huge potential cost savings. The problem with ILM was not IT, although some technologies were not in place, but the lack of interest and commitment from the business side. All too often, the response from the business side was, we don't have time. All our information is important. Just buy some more disk. And the whole ILM idea bit the dust. Our model is based on the same basic principles, but with a big difference. This is a model IT departments can use themselves without the business. The result is the same cost savings, but at the same time also improving availability and performance. Does it sound too good to be true? Well, just stay with me for a few minutes and I'll tell you how it works. First, let's look at your current situation. The next step will be to show what we can do to improve things. Let's start by looking at how much of your disk systems actually contain any data at all. Looking at an average customer, Amet, I would say that at least 50% of your current disks are empty. This is worse in distributed environments and better in highly centralized ones. There are often reasons for such a low disk utilization, but there are technologies available to improve this number, and sometimes it's a matter of poor processes where the growth of disks is getting out of control. I would say there are no excuses not to address this today. In the next step, we looked at the data that is actually stored on your disks. I divide them in two types of data. Yes, just two. I call them dynamic and fixed content. The reason for dividing them is that they require different technical solutions and the information stored behaves very differently. Dynamic data is typically database with an application of some kind on top of it. It is often found in the most critical systems with high demands for performance and availability. It has a high change rate where the information objects are frequently accessed and modified. It's important but it's typically only 20% of all the data you store. Fixed content data is the other 80%. It's a combination of file shares, home directories, collaboration areas, etc. This type of data is normally created in huge amounts. It's rarely accessed and almost never modified. It's a mix of very important data and a lot of rubbish. This is the data that clogs up your storage infrastructure and causes pain for administrators, backup recovery and disaster recovery processes. The third step is to look at how much the data is current and how much is old. What old means is up to you, but normally it means that it hasn't been used for three months. Note that I'm not talking about the value of information, that's a business discussion, but about age, which is something IT knows and will be able to use in the design of the storage infrastructure. Dynamic data, with its high change rate, has a lot of current data. Still, I hear more and more customers asking to offload all data from the databases since performance degrade with too large data volumes, and around half of the structured data is old. Then we come to the fixed content. Here, the vast majority by definition is old, and 80% might even be a low number. I'm not saying that old data is unimportant, but since it's old, we can manage it more efficiently. So, 
let's summarize our analysis. If we only use half our disks for actually storing data, and half of our dynamic data, and 80% of our fixed content is old, this means that 13% of our installed disks contain data that our users are actively working with. In other words, if we have 20 terabyte of disk, only 2.6 terabyte is important for users to access. So, what can we do about it? I will give some more general ideas of technologies that can help you. To be more specific, I would need to understand your technical environment in more detail. And that's not possible because I have not met you yet. Let's start with the low utilization of disk. We have spent a number of years consolidating our storage infrastructure, and that trend continues. Now, with the added opportunities of storage virtualization to keep simplifying storage management. The use of VON optimization can also help to bring data into the data center from remote offices. Over the last few years, we have seen some quite innovative technologies to make storage more efficient. Things like the duplication, thin provisioning and snapshots have all proved to be very useful, but most users don't use them as aggressively as they could. Addressing the dynamic data through archiving tools can be a good way. But be aware of what the application can and cannot do because archiving tools are very application-specific. To increase performance, we are starting to see the use of solid-state storage. It's expensive, so the more old data you can offload, the better results you will get. So, how do we handle the fixed content? This type of data is typically stored in a file system, where we can at least find the access pattern of each file. This we can use for tools like HSM, it's okay if you understand its limitations, or more contemporary technology like virtual file systems, to both virtualize the file environment and move data based on access patterns. Don't forget the possibility of your users actually putting or moving the data to the right folders. It's free, it's manual, it works in some use cases. The target for the old data is very important. This secondary tier needs to be very cost effective, not just in price per gigabyte, but more importantly, in the way it's managed. The design here should be self-managing with built-in disaster recovery and backup recovery functions. The cost of buying disk is only 20% of the total cost, where backup recovery, disaster recovery and their management are a big part of the remaining 80%. And this is the origin of doing this type of work. Through this process, we can increase disk utilization and avoid a huge waste of disk space. We can move all data to a more cost-effective second tier. We can take away a big part of the day-to-day -day burden of handling backup recovery and disaster recovery on data that no one is using. We can take even better care of the current data that is being used through higher performance storage like solid state and more advanced backup recovery and disaster recovery solutions, since we only work with a small portion of the data. Now I believe that working through this model with your numbers and your infrastructure can reduce cost and improve service levels at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this story about restructuring data storage and saving money. And don't worry, I'll be back with more. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah